Hello and welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. And today is a knowledge video again, but <clears throat> this time it's not just me talking about whiskey and how things work with whiskey, but this time we are actually looking at statistics of whiskey. We have a whiskey database on whiskey.com and there is a collection of about, I don't know, but Currently, it should be about 19,000 bottles. And there is a lot of data on these bottles, like ABV year, bottling year, and so forth and so on. There are data points. And you can actually sort this stuff and make a diagram out of it and see if there are any correlations between any of the data facts on the bottles. And today we are looking at one of these diagrams that I have produced. You can also produce these diagrams yourself. You just go to whiskey.com, go into the blue section, and then you go to diagrams. You can choose the X axis, Y axis, and then you have a look if you find something extraordinary. And I found something. So today I'm gonna show you uh, the correlation between the alcohol, the ABV, on the y-axis and the bottling year on the x-axis. So what we see is uh, a general trend towards higher ABVs. So, hmm. Okay, before we uh, say anything about the statistics, you shouldn't trust the statistics just right away until you understand the statistics. And when we look at the statistics, uh, we first you have to ask what is shown on the axis. The x-axis shows you the bottling years. Therefore, only whiskey with bottling years are included in this diagram. Whiskies without bottling uh, years you can't include into this diagram. So we are looking more onto the market of uh, the independent bottlings because they tend to have a bottling year and only a few original bottlings do have a bottling year. So that's first is said. Then we only look at the variance of bottles within the database because we don't uh, include the turnover anywhere in the database. So a whiskey that sells very, very well with millions of bottles sold or thousands of bottles sold is um, valued the same as a, a bottle that has just sold, let's say, 50 or 100 bottles. So um, we're looking at all the bottles on the market uh, irrespectively of how well they sell. Okay, then we look at the the um, y-axis and you have to think about what is written on the y-axis. It's actually the average alcohol of the whiskey at this particular year. So you take one year and then you average the alcohol um, content of all the whiskies and then you have uh, the selected reading that is written down in the diagram. But there arises a new problem. What is an average? The mean. Um, okay, there are many averages. Median, mode, arithmetic mean. And we chose the arithmetic mean because I think if you uh, sum everything up divided by the number of uh, data points you have, you get the best va value. The other ones, the the mode where you have the one that is uh, used the most um, is the, the mean. It doesn't apply here. It favors outliers at this point. And the median, the one that if you sort them all by by um, by their their value, and then you take the one that is exactly in the middle, uh, could also um, um, yeah, ignore humps on each side. So we tend to uh, think that the arithmetic mean is the best one for this suitable diagram. So then now we have talked about the constrictions. Now we talk about correlation. What do we see? We see an upwards trend from the year uh, 1980 towards the year, uh, the current year. So, um, I have to say the data points before 1995 are yeah, a bit short, so we don't have many data points there. That's why you see a big spike in 
what is that, 1992, 1993, something like that. Um, that's just because we don't have many data points there. So the average doesn't work that good. So I would tend to ignore what is uh, before the year 2000 or 1995 and um, say, okay, we have a trend from the millennium towards now, uh, towards a higher ABV. So now we have a correlation and uh, this is easily provable. You can say this is the correlation with the constrictions and you can say this is fact. Now we come to causation and here begins the trouble. Um, you can't really prove causation without going out and um, doing a lot of research. So what, what can we do? We can discuss it and we can speculate. Oh, that is awesome. Um, so I give you my three causation attempts for this uh, correla uh, correlation. First one is there's a trend to uh, amongst the um, vintage whiskies towards high percentage whiskies. Yeah. And the second one, uh, whiskies are becoming younger. Therefore, during the maturation, there's less alcohol evapora evaporating. And therefore, the high strength whiskies are becoming even more high strength as less alcohol is evaporating. So that is the second one. And the third one is the producers, the whiskey distillers have a shortage of whiskey. Therefore, they release younger bottlings. And to uh, counteract this, and satisfy the customer, they're releasing more bottlings with higher ABV. So, yeah, but this is not the end of it. If you have a very interesting causation for this correlation, then please feel free to go into the comment section, write it in and think about every reason that could be why we have a trend towards higher ABV whiskies. Um, maybe there is uh, also also constrictions that I've missed, write them as well and upvote everything you like and downvote everything you don't like or you don't think is true. Yeah, that's it. I hope you found this video interesting. If you like statistics, I probably will. And if you found this video interesting, then please feel free to share this video with any mathematicians or statistic guys that you know and see you next time.